This is code.org, and apparently we're working on gas, buddy? What's this do? This app lets users compare gas prices between major cities. Well, that could be depressing. Right now, it only works for Seattle. Ooh, go Seattle. All right, let's check this out. Although I don't want to say, like, go Seattle for gas, because, like, gas is a... Anyways, all right, let's pick a year. Yeah, let's pick 2022. 414. Boo! Gas is Let's pick 2004. Yay! 2004. What a dream year. I was young, full head of hair, still had acne. I still have acne. That was supposed to be. Anyways. All right. Let's just see. Oop. Three and oop. Okay. Bounce it around. So cool. But it obviously is only working for Seattle. All right. What are we going to do? Right now, it only. Yep. Your job is to pick one of the other cities. Ooh. I'll pick maybe Chicago. I don't know. Pick one other city on the map and make it work for that city. Run the program and read the code to see how it works. You uh, check. We did that. Use the code for Seattle as an example. Add code to set up another list for the city that you've picked. All right. Look through the data set in the data table to see how it's organized. Head it over to the data table. Head it over to the data table. And here we are. Gas prices. Pata. Oh, look, we have a bunch of cities. If I zoom way out, guys, I have to zoom out because I'm zoomed so far in. Seattle is way down here. It's uh, like item 13 in this uh, column 13 or index 12, I believe, but Boston, Chicago. So we need to pick another one. And this is all the data that's being used and shown here. Um, what about Boston? I kind of like Boston and it's the, f oh, there's no, never mind, forget Boston, Chicago it is. All right, so I'm gonna do Chicago and add code to set up another list. They have handy little comments here, so I'm gonna abide or listen to those. Do set up another list for the city that you'd like to add. Head it over to variables and Similar to what they've done here, I'm going to do a bar, and then I'm going to call mine, what did I say, Chicago is what I'll do, so var Chicago equals, and then we need to go ahead and use get column. I'm just going to switch to text, actually, and get rid of that. So what do I want to do? I want to get golem, Oop, and I can hit, click on that to have it autofill. Now, what's the column name? Well... Now, notice what happens when I type this in, guys. What's the table name? It is get, uh, what's the table name is the first parameter, and what's the column that I want to get? All right, so bloop, bloop, and the table name, I have a answer right here, but I could also go over here. It is U.S. gas prices. And then the column name, I chose Chicago. Cool. All right, so that's set. Now, let's see what we have here. Step two, set up a filtered list for the city that you are adding. So honestly, just like this, I'm going to be doing the same thing. Uh, I might even steal theirs, var, and just say filtered mm, Chicago. Works for me. And then I'm going to do equals, and I want it to be an empty list. So it's just the square brackets. Okay, now what? Step three, let me move that over. Add code to clear the filtered list you add it above. Well, if I look above here, guys, you notice how they have filter Seattle. Clearing the filter list so that it starts empty each time. This is how they're doing it here. So I'm gonna follow their advice or their example, filter Chicago, and I'm gonna bloop, 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 bloop. And the reason this is working is I'm saying, okay, filter or ED, and ED here I will. Uh, and I would say filtered Chicago has a new value. So on the event that this method runs, what makes it run? Let's talk about that. On the event that the year dropdown has changed. So if I hit run, actually before I do, notice that this dropdown menu, the ID is called the year dropdown. If I hit run and I change the year dropdown, the computer says, oh, on the event year dropdown changed, check, that just happened. So the first thing it does is say, hey, was anything currently in that filtered Seattle list? It's gone. So we filter the list, we blank out the list, and then we blank out the Chicago list as well. Then we run this filter method. Um, so let's see where that is getting executed. And it might be easier to see this in blocks. Filtered method. So when the computer hits this, it says, what? Now what do I do? After we clicked, after it cleared these, it says, what? Schmack. Mm -hmm. And it runs the code in here. Once it finds this, let's see what happens. Var year picked is going to equal to the get text year dropdown. 
So get text year dropdown. Whatever year I pick here is now going to be set to this year picked variable. Up, oh, and now we have a loop. So for i is equal to zero, i must be less than the date than the length of dates. What is dates? Hmm, I don't know. Ah, it's the dates. It's every date in this date column here. So however many there are, that is the length of it. If there's a hundred, then that is a hundred. Interesting. So why are we doing that? Well, we start with zero. Uh, we have to stay under the date, however many dates there are, and we go up by one each time. So, okay, we're in a loop. First, our variable date is going to be equal to the first date within this column, which is this year. Now, what is it going to do? Okay, we now have a new variable right here is going to be equal to the date substring. So we're parsing the date. So we're taking whatever we just looked at here, this format, right? And we're parsing it. What are we parsing it? Date minus four, comma, date length. Oh, look, that's going to be the year. So really, they're just saying grab those last four items from the date right here, grab that year, then what? If the year is equal to the year picked. So if I pick 2003, and it's looking at this date, then that year would equal the year picked. If this is true, and only if this is true, will the code in here actually run. So if it was 2003, this would be true, and this code would have to run. What happens? Well, I append an item. So on the end of my current empty list, my filter Seattle list, I smash into it the whatever data for Seattle is for gas price for that year. So if it is 2003, then that is true. And then this is index zero. It's item one, but it's index zero. Then also it will smash into our list the price of 153. It would then go to the next row. Oh yeah, six, two, what are the last word? 2003. It would also add that to our list. All right. Now let's just follow this through real quick. What eventually is going to happen with our list? Why are we doing that? So it is true. We hit the bottom, right? We add it to the end of our list. We hit the bottom, hit the bottom of our loop, go back to the top. I, we add one to I. So I is now equal to one because we go up by one each time. Is one greater than the whole length of the list? No, we still have a bunch of dates to go through and we're going to check every one. So one is still less than the whole length. We go back through this again. If it is the year that we selected, we add that, uh, that price, the price for Seattle's gas onto the end of our filter list. If it's not, we don't. We leave it off of the list. And the way we're doing this, guys, is we're using two lists, right? One list contains the dates. If the date that we are currently looking at, the last four numbers are the year we're looking for, then we have another list of the Seattle gas prices that we're utilizing. And we grab those indexes and add them into the list. And then we're going to average them at the end. All right. All that being said, we need another append item. This time, though, we're going to append it to the city list. So filtered Chicago. And now I will do. And now I want to kill off this F because I don't want to append an F. I'm going to sometimes you have to move the cursor with the arrow keys to delete, delete those quotes. They fight you. Mm, Chicago I. So whatever's at Chicago at that point, if that's the correct year. Cool. Now, once this loop's done running, which is here, right? Once we go through all the dates, the method will be done. Click, and we appear back up here. We then at Seattle average. We average the results for Seattle. Interesting. So now they're going to ask us, yep, to create a function where we average whatever we just did. So what I'm going to do, guys, is since it will be similar to this, I'm going to highlight this code, copy the function Seattle. I'm going to go down to line 60. I'm going to right click or command click on a Mac and hit paste. So now Seattle average, I'll call this Chicago, Chicago average. Um, or I could even go back through and name this like my city or whatever city I wanted. And now I'll do and filtered Chicago, Chicago.length. And then if filtered Chicago K, so the price is going to be equal to the item in the Chicago list at this point. Now where I need to add it to my 
Chicago total. Okay, let me go back to box real quick. So what's happening here? Right now, I'm just flipping this over, guys. I duplicated this because it's going to be nearly identical. And I'm flipping over the variable. So now I have a Chicago total. And when will this run? Well, we're going to call it up here. How are we going to calculate this? We set our Chicago total equal to zero. We are now going to loop everything through the filtered list. What are the only items in the filtered list? Well, after running this code up here, the only data points in my filtered list are gas prices that correspond to the year selected. So we're going to go all the way through the list with our for loop, right? Starting at index here. And each time we create this variable price and we set it equal to the current value we are at in the index. So to start, right, the first time we're doing this, if I pick 2003, the price would be 159. Uh, and then the next index, so index 1, index 0 is 159, 1 is 156, 2 is 163. And that's what the, we're going to loop through. Each time we do that, we're going to say, okay, take Chicago's total. It is now equal to whatever the total used to be equal to. We're just starting, so it used to be equal to 0, plus 163. So now it's 163. We hit the bottom back to the top of the loop. Go to the next data point. The next data point was, oh, I guess it was 159, 156. Add that up and we keep going. Then this is how we average it. We do a math round and we take the, ah, uh, I need to flip this though, because this is we're doing Chicago total and then filtered Chicago. It technically probably shouldn't, it wouldn't matter because they're going to have the same length, but that's fine if you fill their different cities. And then um, I'll call mine Chicago average. They abbreviated that, I'm not going to. And then, um, ooh, now I have to get a label. So let's see. Oh, they called this one Chicago label. I can tell by the ID. And then I switch that to Chicago. Make sure you leave these quotes. And then I called mine average. All right, ooh. And then once it's done with this, it should pop up here because right here set the text and that's what's going to change it over now we of course have to run the method i have not they run average seattle here to run a method we got to say its name let's see if we messed anything up wah yeah cool that is a good chunk of code pretty cool onward